Welcome to today's edition of Good Morning Abuja. This is reaching you from NTA Channel 5, the Unity Station. And um, uh, whenever it's morning, I feel so, so good. Especially when you have to be on set to educate people and tell them what kind of information they should be getting on a daily basis. What do you think? I, I think so. It's yeah. really, really amazing. But I was coming to you. You look good. Oh yeah, it yes. looks good too. And I like I like your morning your Monday vibe. And I like the design here. Okay. <laughs> Please. Anyway, oh, okay. this that's, is motivational talk by Elo Talk. Wait. What you do consistently for thirty days already becomes a habit. It becomes a pattern of behavior. It becomes a lifestyle. It becomes what you do naturally. It becomes a definition of your mentality. It becomes a definition of your morality. It becomes a reflection of your conduct and a reflection of your character. That is what habit is all about. And you must realize that habits is what makes people. When you have good habits, you become a good person. When you have bad habits, you also become a bad person. And so uh, the law of success, the law of failure, Success and failure is also determined by habits. Successful people are successful because they have good habits. They have successful habits. And failures are failures. Not because they are born as failures, but they fail as an act. They fail as, an, as a consequence of bad habits. So bad habits will lead to failures and good habits will lead to success. <laughs> we've worked on your mind it's time for us to work on your body so you go out there and keep fit this is the keep fit segment to have you back you're still watching good morning abuja and right about now we have a uh, uh when we talk about women most times i wonder where do they derive the strength where do they get all this um um power uh, i don't know how to qualify it uh, do you have english to help me with please okay, you are on your own <laughs> <laughs> okay um i there is a woman actually on set with us right now. I will introduce her in a bit. But she is actually one woman I have tried to relate with, but I can't because the challenges she has surmounted over time is something I would say, God, please. She has strength. She has resilience. She has, she's a woman. If you're talking about a woman, this is a true definition of a woman. I am actually talking about Dr. Badewa Adejibwe Williams. I got your name right. Close enough. <laughs> okay. Okay, so good to have you on the show. Thank you. You know, I when I went through that story and I, I saw you there, I was wondering how did she do this? I mean, developmental disability, how do you manage this? But you are here now, you're going to tell us more about that. So let's meet you. And okay. um, you are actually the founder Royal School of Education Therapy Foundation, and you are an educational psychologist. I'm an educational therapist. therapist. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so let's get to hear a bit of your story. Okay, as you've said, I'm a woman. I always believe that, you know, there's nothing that's too much for women to accomplish. We're built that way. It's innate in us. You know, we overcome challenges. We solve problems. With me, I'm a mother. I'm a mother of three. My first initial set of children are twins. 
Uh, they're the joy of my life. They have a developmental disability. You know, they were diagnosed at that time as having mild to moderate mental retardation. If you want to know what that is, it's like, you know, your children are expected to speak at certain times and they don't speak. Mm -hmm. They're expected to be able to read. You know, you have them in school. They've been there for years. You expect them to learn how to read, how to, you know, do mathematics, how to write, and they cannot. Mm -hmm. You know, they were developing with this inability. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll give, give them a directive and they would not understand how to carry it out. We know that because of this, you even started a kind of academy, especially for children with special needs. And we also learned that, uh, so as to tell the story of children with special needs, because their stories are undertold. People are not telling their stories. Mm -hmm. Nigerians can relate. Even parents with children who have children with special needs, even when they are diagnosed, you know, they're at that point where the parents are like, no, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those children don't even, the, the, the children don't undergo therapy for a longer period of time because the parents are yet to, you know, come to the come facts, to that, come to terms it. that their children are children with special needs. So because of this, you started something unique and you shot a movie and even made a documentary about it so tell us how you did that mm -hmm. that is quite fascinating um you know we need to have high expectations of our children regardless of their ability or inability if you have a high expectation and you are very optimistic and you know that you are doing your part which is to give them love unconditional love and give them the support they need there's not much that they cannot achieve to at their levels so how the movie came about and the docudrama drama came about is an interesting story a couple of years ago, you know, they read a story. They did an assignment. Okay, in the class. children with special needs. The children with special needs at the academy at the learning center. Okay, learning center. Yeah, okay. they they read a story. You know, when I say they read a story at their levels, mm -hmm. okay. But the thing about it was the empathy they developed from the story, which was about child labor. Even they were like, no, that is wrong. How could you have a little child on the street instead of being at school? So they said they wanted to send a message to the president. So they made a little well, the short children movie. children said this. Can you imagine? Wow. That's why I said never underestimate yeah. them. So when they said it just blew me away. So they made a little, sh like a few seconds message, a couple of minutes message to the president to stop child labor. Mm -hmm. We put it on social media. And then in class, they were just doing all kinds of things. And, you know, they were progressing. And I was like, this progress needs to be shown to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll, on, you'll hear that, yes, yeah, send your children to school. They'll learn, they'll do this. A lot of parents are still not sending it because they don't believe it, you know, that the children will improve. Mm -hmm. So look at those children. They came in at this level. Look at where they are now. Let's document this. Let's let the world know that despite our disability, they mm. can learn something, mm. especially vocational skills, you know? Wow. So when we said we were going to do that, and we were talking about movies, you know, because a lot of them like animations, you know, they watch all these cartoons. Mm -hmm. and we we're talking about movies. And I started a discussion with them in class that day. I was like, wouldn't you like to make your own movie? And they were all like, yes, 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 okay. So we started, we just came up with one idea. One person, you know, we, we reviewed movies. So what, mm -hmm. how should it begin? One person would come up with the idea, this is what should happen in the beginning. Another one would now tell us what should happen next. Mm -hmm. So we now got ideas. Each and every single one of them contributed. So all, all you're trying to say is all the children, the special needs children conceptualized, you know, the stories behind the when movie. When you watch the movie, it's their story. Wow. It's their story. That we were fortunate enough that Lancelot Oduai Masuen, wow. otherwise called Governor, one of Nollywood's most prolific directors and producers, got involved. Oh. So he got a professional scriptwriter to come in mm -hmm. to sit with them. You know, that one, when she first came in, she first wrote something. I was like, no, these are not our children. So mm -hmm. she had to come and spend time with them wow. at the school at the center you know talking to them talking to some families and you know some of our children are not verbal you know they, mm -hmm. they cannot talk mm -hmm. you know or so it depends we have different levels you know we have some with profound disabilities you understand and interacting with them just observing and watching them seeing how they were doing things you know was now able to now go back with knowledge you know to write the screenplay Mm. So now our idea, we had different reasons for making the docudrama. Mm. 
Number one, we watch movies all the time about persons with special needs, but most often acted by actors. Okay, but not with, pe not not by with people actual people with, with special the special needs. needs. Oh, it's okay. just a few that you would see out there. And then none of them is, has really been about an African. So this has to be from an African's perspective. So that woman in the village would see this child. I know, yeah, that, that boy looks just like my son. You know, that child looks just like mine. Mm. That disability is what my child has. If that child in that movie, in that documentary, is able to do, it, do these things, maybe right. mine be too be will to. be able to. Yeah. So that's the message we want to send out. Wow. That Amazing. people with disabilities, number one, they have abilities. Mm -hmm. Number two, let them be themselves. Number three, let's give them societal inclusion. Let's mm -hmm. because now you know they can learn, they can get a learn a vocation. Yeah. Give them a job. Okay. Don't discriminate against them. Don't marginalize, you know, these children. I have to ask, did the you know people with special needs truly act in this movie? You'll see them. Watch wow. the movie. You'll wow. see them. Wow. The lead actor is a child with traumatic brain injury. And you know what is really in interesting is while on the set, while filming, of course, you know, they cannot memorize. They have to yes, be memorized. Yes, you know, you yes. have to be yeah. guiding them and teaching them. Mm -hmm. While on the set, he had a seizure. Wow. All the filmmakers, all the crew, they just panicked. Because they they've they never had seen never that experienced that before. Oh. Sometimes some children with special needs, you would see them; they may look like you and I, and you wouldn't know mm. because it's neurodevelopmental. It's not always evident. Yeah. Thank you so much, Doctor Badiola, for coming on the program today. Yeah. And this is a wonderful, and you know, and it's, it's an initiative that is laudable. And we say well done for what you're doing Thank and we you. hope to see your children uh, you know and children with special needs around the world doing doing something big yeah. and bigger and yeah, probably yes. very soon after this movie we should be seeing our children you know uh doing the hollywood collaboration yeah thank you so much again for coming thank you you're welcome back to good morning abuja and we all know that since the beginning of the month of march uh, we have been bringing women of substance women who have been creating impact in the society especially here in the northern zone where we reside and this is where nt channel 5 abuja is and there is one woman that's been you know at the forefront of taking girls out of the street uh, she even started a program which she terms no to girl child hawking in nigeria and she has been using a platform and a foundation to take a girl child orcas from the street and putting them in school and guess what she's funding the education from you know junior school level to higher school level what an amazing impact one lady is creating and also she has also been using this our foundation to ensure that she empower women in the northern area of nigeria i don't want to blow too much about trumpet i'll let her blow you know the bulk of our trumpet today on the show so right here with us we have munira suleiman tanimu she's the founder of green hearts impact foundation as well as the glam empowerment and mentorship program good morning to you munira thank you so much for great to have you morning. welcome to the show thank you know you. seeing a woman like you you're young and you're creating this much needed impact in the country especially here in the northern part of nigeria what informed your decision to you know go into this do this change the lives and change the stories of women and girls in our society okay assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh um first of all i think um i am privileged to be in a society of course where you know uh there are few women who are doing well mm. to be honest so i think it is a privilege that i am from an average family of course who take education so serious and of course business mm. so um i find myself you know with so many so much blessings and i think if i don't spread it all out i am not going to good i'm not doing good for my religion mm. and for the women around me so um that was how i created and founded the green heart impact foundation i found so many women in my area or probably in the north mm -hmm. you know really going backwards in the society and how do we help and support these women if we don't come together you know if if we don't you know um assist in making them better people 
you know, for the society. So that was how the Green Heart Impact Foundation was founded. And um, of course, in my religion, we know that um, giving is part of Islam. So if you have no matter how little and you share with your loved ones, you are also helping yourself. And of course, the reward comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was how I started. And that was what, you know, um, prompted me, of course, to start this uh, foundation. Mm, I mean, yeah. mm. yes. What's the acceptance like? within the families you've reached out to yeah. uh, most times people would say i don't want to go to school i want to learn a trade mm -hmm. what do you do when that comes okay up? um well you do we have challenges of course mm -hmm. and uh starting this project of no to girl child hawking in nigeria hashtag books over trees was not easy we decided to start from the north because of course that is where the problem is not that we don't have it in the other parts of nigeria we do have it but you know it's kind of rampant here in the north mm. so um honestly seeing young girls of eight nine ten hawking mm. during school hours of course as a mother and of course as a woman you know it it it's it's disheartening mm. so um starting this program was not funny it was not easy because we had to go through the streets mm -hmm. you know to actually talk to these girls and guess what some of them want to go to school but okay. because they don't have the resources mm. to go to school they don't have that privilege there's nothing they can do about it exactly. but most of them most of them don't want to go to school mm. why because they are used to that kind of life they are used to that kind of, in the society or the community that they are you know, it's it's really rare for women around that area to go to school. Mm. So they find it very difficult to accept. So it's not a usual, accept. normal, a norm yes, for them, a normal yes. way of life. And as a mother, I feel these girls are going through a lot, through a lot. Most of them are being raped, kidnapped, killed, and so many other things. So what are things and how do we help these women mm. as women, as mothers? Oh, how okay. do we do that? So that is the main aim why we started going round nigeria of course i went around seven states and mm. i have over 75 girls in school now wow yes nice. so we started we started from kaduna state of course i'm from kaduna charity begins at home yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i started from kaduna i have my 10 girls in school they started from jss1 most mm -hmm. of them all of them are hawkers but most of them went through primary school oh, okay. yes so some didn't have the resources to the continue. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. So I took 10 of them, which of course, both Muslims and Christians together. They are in SS1 at the moment. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Kano, I have 10 and they're all in SS1 too. Sokoto, I have 12. Uh, 10 are in SS1, 2 yeah. are in HSS2. Wow. Borno, I have 10, they're all mm -hmm. in SS1. Mm -hmm. uh, Niger State, I have 10, they're all in SS1. I like how you're keeping all those figures. Mm -hmm. You yes. have the figures. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kebi, I have 11. All of them are in JSS3. And of course, Nasarawa State, I have 15. Wow. Yes, but wow. they are in JSS2. Okay, Munir, so yeah. as much as we know that you've been personally funding, you know, bulk of the work of these yeah. foundations. Mm -hmm. Do you outsource most times? Do you get wary at a point where uh, you, you seem constrained by funds and you want to reach out to you, maybe uh, another foundation mm -hmm. or someone to help out? Okay, um, I started business as a very young woman, age of uh, 19. Mm. And I'm, of course, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 30s now. And Alhamdulillah, I must say my father did a great job you know, in raising a strong woman. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I am happy about that. Um, I have few businesses here and there. I have an event center, of course, in Abuja. Uh, I have a poultry farm and then I have uh, a transportation company. Wow. All these things I do, honestly, I'm grateful to God. Oh, okay. You know, I have a very good turnover. And then what I do is I take 10% of my profit every month into my NGO, which is the Green Heart Impact Foundation. Mm -hmm. And when I started my NGO, I wanted my NGO to be unique and different from any other NGO. Mm -hmm. Most people start, I'm not saying all, but most people start their NGO, you know, for just to fund for, themselves. For, for personal gains. You understand? Yeah. But it is my passion. I didn't start, you know, okay. to, 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 you know, any gain, so. gain or anything. Yeah. And today my NGO is six so, years mm, and I decided, years. yes. So how do you feel sitting back, seeing all these children that very soon in a couple of years, two years, three years, for those who are in just three, Honestly, they'll be out of secondary school. How I, do you feel? I always say I have over 80 
children mm. of course i have two kids biological kids but i have seven to eight so i feel fulfilled and complete mm. i feel like this is my purpose in life and alhamdulillah i am doing great it makes me happy okay yeah. anyway thank you so much munira suleiman tanimu for coming she is the founder of green heart impact foundation as well as the glam empowerment and a mentorship program as she has been running this campaign of no to girl child walking in nigeria using the hashtag books over traits before we go please munira is there any time you know president Buari, you know the government is saying we should not solely depend on oil yeah we should diversify the economy yeah so i'm now talking to you should we be expecting you diversifying from girls and touching boys as well uh-huh very soon because i'm a boy child advocate you cannot yes. be taking care of girls yes, you know but that. you know the you know mostly the problem is for the women if the mm. women are empowered oh, okay. you know it brings so much to the society mm. it adds you know to the economic growth of the country okay. yeah so <laughs> that's that's amazing yes. okay i hope we do empower the women so much and we forget the men and then they now become a leech to the women <laughs> now it's time for us Thanks. to move on to a piece of entertainment Welcome from the flight and train schedule and we'll be taking a look at what the weather has for us today. a great time right yeah it is talking yeah. about you know children with special needs you know that part actually touched me Take seriously me. no and you know when i heard the talk about you know children with special needs acting in a movie mm. that in fact that is unique so so unique that has never been done in nigeria and of course a doctor was or he is a trailblazer in that aspect yeah and i would say i commend every woman out there whatever you're struggling with god always has a hand in your struggle so don't give up like her you would keep pushing forward and achieving so much more than you can ever imagine like this is where we draw the curtains on today's edition of the show and i am wolfi Ivo. i am sabine sunday have a splendid week ahead. <music>